Hey there, my name is Jaden, and here at Foam Armory, we are massive fans of Star Wars The Clone Wars, which is why I'm happy to present today's build, Captain Rex's Phase 2 Clone Trooper Helmet. Check it out. Today, we'll be modifying this Pepicure model to emulate the Hot Toys Captain Rex figure. These changes include rounding out the recesses of the cheek and building up the details of the earpieces. These templates are a great jumping off point, even if they lack some details baked in. As soon as we print out the patterns, we hit the ground running, taping everything together and cutting out all the pattern pieces for tracing. I also took the time to try out two separate dome patterns I've been playing with lately. One with vertical darts, one with lateral darts. It was important to me to nail the shape of the dome, so before going any further with the build, I decided to piece together the two domes for comparison out of 6mm foam. As you can see, the lateral darts bind the outer edge of the piece and really give it a much stronger shape, whereas the vertical darts don't bind the bottom edge and end up with a wide, untapered dome. Therefore, we'll be going with the lateral darts, because that will give us the cleanest, most accurate dome to Captain Rex's actual helmet. With the dome settled, I pulled out my folder of patterns and began tracing. I wanted to make use of some scrap first. Never be afraid to take a little extra time to limit waste and stretch your budget. After a quick round of tracing, I sharpened up my blade and systematically cut out every single piece, being sure to bevel certain pieces for added detail while cutting everything out. It's worth dry fitting pieces together to check for fit now and avoid issues further down the line. I pulled a few pieces of 8mm foam for the vents and the rebreather. I needed the added thickness to really pop that detail out from the recessed areas. During this process, it's worth organizing some of the smaller pieces in the mouth vents as well. Before gluing, I had to wade through the sea of necessary undercuts for Rex's helmet. A great deal of these pieces needed undercuts and or guide marks laid out before main assembly. It helps to be as clear and clean with these markings as possible. I also went through and rounded out some of these pieces at this stage because they would be harder to reach later on in the process. Then, everything was taken to a well-ventilated outdoor area for contact cement. I find that a good stir keeps the glue fresh and two layers are all that's needed for a clean, lasting bond. A nice heat gun helps assist in the bonding process, especially as the weather takes a turn for the colder. If you're looking to get into foam cosplay, I have affiliate links to all of my materials down below in the description. It's an easy way to help out the channel and support these builds. After all that, you should be left with something like this, a slightly warped but pretty decent raw helmet. I opted to cut away some of the excess at the bottom of my helmet to make it easier to get this helmet on and off. I just marked out my cut line, made sure my blade was fully sharpened, and after making the first cut, I used the off cut as a guide for symmetry. It's very easy to make small edits for builds like this, so don't be afraid to be bold. With plenty of room for my massive noggin, I took a moment to trim around the window for the visor. Next, we can bust out our rotary tool with a stone grinding bit to do some fine sculpting. The stone bit helps us to get a smooth finish on our foam and eliminate any burrs that might be left behind before sealing and paint. This is also a great time to smooth out any small errors that may be affecting the overall shape of the build. At this point, I used some foam clay to build in the details that the Pepicura model lacked. When working with foam clay, I wet the foam slightly and slowly work the clay into the surface to smooth between the foam base and the clay. I also used the clay to create the weld lines around the faceplate. This effect could also be achieved with hot glue, but the foam clay has a longer working time and is definitely more flexible in the long term. I paused here to clean up the range finder and sharpen some of the folded edges before making certain to put the foam clay back in an airtight container for future builds. For the details inside the middle of the rebreather, I decided to carve up an old thread spool. I had to cut the spool down to make it a bit shorter before gluing it in place. I also heat treated the main bucket to help it hold its shape. Similar to the spool of thread, I took a flexible rod from an old cat toy to serve as the rod of the rangefinder. I found that the flexibility of the rod complemented the durability of the foam. I then cut a piece of PVC pipe to size and drilled a hole for the rod with my rotary tool before hot gluing both the rangefinder and the PVC to the dowel. After covering the PVC mounting in foam, 
I cut a hole in the earpiece of the main bucket about an eighth of an inch smaller than the PVC pipe. After removing the offcut, the assembled rangefinder fit snugly and I hot glued the thread spool into the rebreather. Before we paint, we must seal the foam to achieve a smooth finish with our paint. I decided to go with my tried and true watered down Mod Podge for the initial round of sealant. Two coats were applied over everything, even the plastic bits. As long as you diligently check for drips and runs, you should be left with a smooth finish like this. As you wait for everything to dry, why not check out our Captain Rex makeup tutorial and get those cheekbones that can cut glass. Once everything's dry and your face is fully done up, you can use some quick seal silicone caulk to fill any small gaps that still dot the surface of your build. I applied a layer of Plasti Dip to highlight any issues I still needed to fill at this point. With that, the rangefinder was coated in Rust-Oleum gloss black and the PVC was masked off to keep it clean. The main bucket itself was sprayed down with a Krylon satin white, and then the build was assembled just to be sure everything was still fitting properly and properly poseable. With everything lining up, I decided to finish the build in acrylics. I began by putting down a layer of black over the weld lines as well as the stripe running around the dome of the helmet. Then I mixed up a nice matte gray to dry brush the rangefinder and filled the recess at the back of the dome. To get the sharp lines of Captain Rex's iconic blue paint, I decided to mask those areas before diving right in. It's okay if there's a little bleed through because we'll still be adding many layers of weathering to this build. For the forehead paint, I took the time to draft up a stencil and again, I brushed on a deep blue to fill those details. I was able to repeat the process again for the lines on the tubing leading into the rebreather at the front of the helmet, stippling over the stencil. The helmet was dusted beige with a rattle can to give the whole thing some more texture. Once that was all dried, I wanted to pop the blue of the visor a bit more, so I whipped up a much lighter blue and did a soft dry brush to highlight the edges of the visor and some of the other blue markings as well. The rust effect surrounding the weld lines was achieved with a series of two watered down layers, a darker brown followed by a burnt umber. Much of this paint was wiped away, leaving a rough layer of grime exactly where we need it. I also watered down the burnt umber and splattered it all over the helmet for even more varied droplets. Various layers of grey and black washes were applied to pop out the layers of the helmet and really emphasize the depth of the details in the ears, vents, and rebreather. To achieve a chipped paint look, I pulled out my natural sponge and dabbed some white paint over the top of the blue detailing. This effect is surprisingly effective. And last but not least, I used a rough bristle brush to apply some rub and buff silver to the faux weld marks and to dry brush the rangefinder for good measure. The final touch for this build is a replacement tinted visor cut to size with a hefty pair of shears. The outer edges of the visor were scuffed to promote strong adhesion between the plastic and the foam. This visor was then hot glued into place, and the bucket was complete. So here it is all finished up, and I have to say I could not be happier with how this build has turned out. I somehow managed to make a lot of really good decisions while completing this build. Chief among those decisions was the choice to use lateral darts on the dome rather than those vertical ones because this, this thing just did not 
defined right, and frankly, the shape is not as accurate. One of the things that gets my goat with a lot of Hepicura clone trooper builds is the lack of proper shape overall. And I have to say, I think this thing really hits the mark. And I'm also really happy that the range finder is good and posable. All of that is not to say that there aren't things I would do differently were to do this again. I think there may be a couple details that are perhaps inaccurate, but again, we're going for somewhere between a cartoon and a real live action piece. So I think we get there for most of the shapes. However, there's a lot more detail that could have been added to the range finder. I managed to mimic a lot of it with paint, but we could go further. Additionally, while I was able to correct the shape of the cheek recess, I will say it's perhaps better to work off something like a Phase 2 Clone Trooper template. And I just so happen to have a Phase 2 Clone Trooper template. It's not the free one that's coming out with this video, but if you check out the link to my Etsy down below, I do have a template for a Phase 2 Clone Trooper that is just $3. So check it out, still far enough out for Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, from now until the end of the month, everything in our Etsy store that's a full build is gonna be 15% off. So if you've ever wanted to own something that I've made, in one of these videos or in the past, check it out. I've been really happy lately with a lot of people reaching out to the shop. I love talking to more prop makers, so please comment down below, like, and subscribe for future builds. If you want to go even further with Rex cosplay, I have a makeup tutorial for how to do the faux cubism of the TV show. So be sure to check that out on the channel and click around if you want to learn more about foam prop making. I put out new videos weekly and I have live streams every Tuesday, Thursday. But for now, I've been Jaden here for Foam Armory. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.